Is it just me, or do weather forecasters often seem to get it wrong when it's time for a big snowstorm? Sometimes they predict too little, and sometimes they forecast way too much. So why does it seem like weather forecasts are wrong more often in the winter? Well, today we're going to be looking at five reasons why snowfall is so hard to predict. Reason number one, weather models. Weather models are essentially computer programs that take observed atmospheric data and, using math and statistical analysis, predict what the weather is going to be in the future. Some of the more commonly relied upon weather models, among others, are the European model, the GFS, and the NAM. Each of these models provides forecast data four times per day. Though weather models are extremely helpful in weather forecasting, they aren't perfect by any means. And while they sometimes find consensus, they often will contradict each other regarding the track, timing, or strength of a storm, often right up to the time when the storm is supposed to hit. When this happens, it's up to the forecaster to use his or her best judgment about which model is most reliable in each particular instance, or to take a blend of multiple models. Reason number two, precipitation type. With many snowstorms, such as the oft-discussed nor'easter, the line between mostly snow and mostly rain can be pretty narrow. Just 30 or 40 miles can make a huge difference in the type of precipitation a location receives. It doesn't take much rain to cut deeply into a predicted snow total if the storm track is just a few dozen miles from where it was predicted to be. Additionally, the temperature at the surface isn't the only important element in determining precipitation type. If it is warm in the upper atmosphere, but cold at the surface, you will often get freezing rain, because the precipitation falls as rain, but freezes once it hits the ground. If you have a cold upper atmosphere and a cold surface, but a warm layer in between, what starts as snow will often melt as it falls, only to refreeze as sleet before reaching the ground. While freezing rain and sleet are frozen precipitation types, they don't accumulate as quickly as snow. An unexpected warm layer of the atmosphere can wreak havoc on a weather forecast. Reason number three, snow ratios. It isn't just the type of precipitation that is determined by the upper atmosphere. Temperatures above 5,000 feet also determine how much snow is produced by a certain amount of moisture. Whether rain, sleet, or snow, weather models determine how much melted precipitation will fall to the earth in a given location over a given time frame. On most occasions, about 10 inches of snow will accumulate for every one inch of accumulated water. This is what we call a 10 to 1 snow ratio. When the upper atmosphere is well below freezing, however, that ratio can increase. A temperature of 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the upper atmosphere can produce snow ratios as high as 30 to 1. That means that even when a weather model predicts the correct amount of water falling from the sky, a prediction for snow can be way off if the upper atmosphere is colder or warmer than expected. Reason number four, Virga. Sometimes rain or snow can fall from the sky but evaporate before it hits the ground. This is called Virga. Virga will often show up as accumulated precipitation on a weather model and even shows up on radar. When precipitation falls into drier air, it will evaporate, and in the case of snow, this can really mess with a forecast. Often, a meteorologist will call for snow to begin at noon, but it doesn't seem to start falling until several hours later. This can be because it took that much time for the evaporating snow to overcome the dry air in that location. Nothing is worse for a forecaster than to watch its snow on the radar, but not out the window. Reason number five, snow is easily observable. Okay, think about when it rains in the spring. A forecaster might call for two inches of rain on a given day. If it were to only rain one and a half inches, would you know the difference? Probably not. Meanwhile, in the winter, that half inch difference in precipitation could mean five fewer inches of snow, and that you would certainly notice. Maybe the biggest reason snow is so hard to predict is because it's so easily observable. Minor deviations from a forecast are exaggerated in winter months because of the things we've discussed today. And when you're talking about the impact from a major snowfall, the effects are far easier to observe. So remember, the next time your TV weatherman screws up a winter forecast, go easy on him. There are reasons why snowfall is so hard to predict. And besides, his forecast probably did happen, just not at your house. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you have an idea for something you want us to cover here on 5R, please leave a comment down below and let us know what that could be. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification icon, and we'll see you next time.